Welcome to worship on the third Sunday in Lent, March 3rd, 2024. Special welcome to all visitors. Um, the following names have been added to the prayer list since it was printed. Those names are Mary and Mickey Smith. Our weekly Lenten Bible study on the book of Psalms will continue this Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. We will meet in person and also have a Zoom link available for those who would prefer to meet that way. I'll send out the link in my daily email on Tuesday morning. Today is the last day to submit a card for the card shower for Linda and Rich Kessler. If you'd like to participate, please just put a card in the basket out on the narthex counter. Today, after worship, there will be a brief healing service. All are welcome to stay for that. It'll be a, last about 10 minutes, and that'll be right in this room. Uh, Holy Week is coming up in just a few weeks, starting March 24th. Uh, this year, we will have a service every evening that week from Monday through Friday. They're explained in detail in the newsletter, but really quickly, Monday will be a healing service, Tuesday will be a Tizay music service, Wednesday will be a Stations of the Cross walk, Thursday will have Maundy Thursday, and Friday will be Good Friday. All of these services will be at 7 o'clock p.m. And then on Easter Sunday, we'll worship with the Vigil of Easter at 6 a.m., and regular worship at 9.45, and there will be an Easter breakfast between them. We do need helpers for many of these services, and there are sign-up sheets out on the Narthex counter if you're interested in signing up. Two youth-related announcements. Uh, first, two of our youth are planning to attend the National Youth Gathering this summer, along with some youth from St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Plainfield. They are hosting a fundraiser, a fish dinner, on Good Friday, and this will be held at St. Peter's, so please come out and support our youth. Um, you do need to sign up ahead of time, and information and a sign-up form are again out in the narthex. Second, we are working together with St. Peter's, as well as Trinity Lutheran in Bangor and Christ Lutheran in Stone Church, to create a Slate Belt Lutheran Youth Program uh, for youth in 6th through 12th grade. And we're calling it SLY, which is short for Slate Belt Lutheran Youth. Um, our first event will be Saturday, April 20th, um, and if you're interested, please let me know. Um, it was brought to my attention that there is a milestone birthday in our midst today. Uh, Gladys Steinmetz is turning 39 today. <laughs> So happy birthday, Gladys, and many more 39ths to come. Um, there are no announcements I neglected to make. Uh, then the time has come to worship the Lord. Let us quiet our voices and our hearts. Bye. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law in our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. <laughs> Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know, forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the young and young at heart to come forward for story time. Good morning. Good morning. Today's story is the story of how Moses received the Ten Commandments. Do you ever hear of the Ten Commandments? I think some of you heard about them in Sunday school today. So the, the Ten Commandments are ten rules that God gave us to help us grow closer to God. And I wonder if you can name any of them. Any of you name one of the Ten Commandments? What? Don't use God's word. Don't use God's name in bad ways. Don't use God's name in bad ways. Absolutely. That's one of them. There shall be no other gods. Shall be no other gods before me. That's another one. You got one? No. Nope. You got another one? If you get married, be loyal to your husband or wife. If you get married, be loyal to your husband or wife. That's another one. We got three of them so far. Steal stuff that's not you. Don't steal stuff. That's another one. We got four of them. All right. To, um, okay. I'll tell you what, let's, let's go through them in order. You did get four of them, but I'm going to tell you all of them. So let's count with our fingers as we go through. So number one, you should worship me, nobody else. That's a lot like the one you said. Number two, don't use my name in a bad way. We got two fingers up? Two fingers, come on. Well, I'm going to look at you for number four for sure. Number three, remember it's very important to rest. Number four, Listen to your mom and dad. <laughs> Number five, don't hurt anyone. Number six, don't betray your friends or your family. Number seven, don't take things that aren't yours. Number eight, don't lie. 
And number nine, don't try and get something that isn't yours. And number 10, no really, don't try to get anything that isn't yours. And that's 10. They're kind of hard to follow, aren't they? Did you break any of them yet today? I did. You did. We all have. You know, it's, God, it's what God wants us to always try to do, but God understands that we're going to mess up. We're going to mess up. And we can always, always tell God that we're sorry, and God will always, always forgive us. So it's good that God gave us these rules to follow, but God understands and will always forgive us. So thank you for your help with this, and good job for knowing some of them. And let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear God, thank you for the Ten Commandments. Help us to follow them the best we can. And always forgive us when we blow it. Amen. Okay, you can go back to your seats. Thanks. A reading from Exodus. After escaping from slavery, the Israelites came to Mount Sinai, where God teaches them how to live in community. The Ten Commandments proclaim that God alone is worthy of friendship, worship, following from God. The life of the community flourishes when based in honesty, trust, fidelity, and respect for life, family, and prophecy. God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol, whether in form of anything that is in heaven above or is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Punishing children for the inequity of parents, the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the, to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commands. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord, your God, for the Lord will not Acquit anyone who misuses the divine name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall be in labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, you male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your town for in six days the Lord made heaven and and earth the sea and all that is in them but rested on the seventh day therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and and cons consecrated. consecrated it honor your father and mother so that your days may be long in the land of the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not co covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or, or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thank you. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day he tells his tale to another, and one night he imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard. Their sound has gone out to all lands, and their message to the ends of the world, where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. 
The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine honey, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own <laughs> Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A reading from 1 Corinthians. The, the word of the cross is pure foolishness and nonsense to the world because it claims that God is mostly revealed in weakness, humiliation, and death. But through such divine foolishness and weakness, God is working to save us. The center of Paul's preaching in Christ is, is Christ crucified. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are per perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it, is, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and di discernment of the discern this and the discerning of the the discernment of the discerning will thwart. There, it, there is one who is wise. Where is the scribe? Where? Where is the de debater of this age? Has not God made foolish of the wisdom of the words? For since in the wisdom of God, the word did not know God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demanded signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified and stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John, the Passover of the Jewish people was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Judeans then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Judeans then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. 
I invite you to look at the pictures on the screen as I read again the words of the first six verses of Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no word or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world, where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. <clears throat> the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. These are images taken by the James Webb Telescope, which was built by NASA in partnership with the Canadian Space Agency and the European Space Agency. It was launched into solar orbit a little over two years ago, and the pictures it has produced are nothing short of astonishing. This is our universe, our home, the creation in which we live. We often hear that science and religion are in conflict with each other, but I don't see it that way. Psalm 19 tells us that the heavens declare God's glory. And the Webb telescope helps us to see signs of that glory in the skies above. Images like this might move us to wonder. To wonder how does this happen? What makes beauty and majesty like this occur? Well, it's physics. The laws of physics, the laws of gravity and electromagnetism and quantum mechanics the laws of motion and thermodynamics and relativity, those advanced mathematical laws that scientists have been researching and exploring since Newton and Galileo, since Archimedes and Thales. These exquisite and spectacular structures in space were created by nothing more than the laws of physics. These laws are amazing and powerful. They describe the symphony of the cosmos. These are the laws of creation, the laws upon which through which God created the heavens and the earth. But mathematics and physics is only one way of describing that symphony. Another way is this. Let there be light. Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years, and let them give light upon the earth. These are the words spoken by God according to Genesis, words that brought into being all that there is, including the things we see here. What are they made of? Well, in one way, they're made of atoms and molecules, quarks and photons. In another way, they're made up of words. The word of God speaking structure and meaning into a world of chaos. The word of God spoken in scripture is the same word of God discovered in a different way by physics. The heavens give glory to God simply by being what they are, simply by following the laws God laid down, simply by being. Let's look closer to home. These pictures are also worth a thousand words. These creatures are also among God's creation, part of the infinite diversity we call life. These too glorify God. Now how do these creatures exist? Well, the laws of biology, laws like photosynthesis and aerobic respiration, like metabolism and homeostasis, all these creatures follow these intricate laws, laws that govern all life. These laws are amazing and powerful. They describe the symphony of vitality. But again, there is another way to describe this symphony. Let the earth put forth vegetation. Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. Again, these were made through God's word. What flows through the cells of all these creatures on one level are chemicals and DNA and cytoplasm. On another level, it's the word of God that flows, speaking life into what once was dust. Both of these things are true. 
the laws of biology reflecting and embodying the laws of God. How do these creatures glorify God? Simply by being themselves, by growing and living and being. Whether it's a nebula in deep space or a fish in the deep ocean, God makes creation to be what it is. And by being what it is, it glorifies God. And so do we. How do we glorify God? Simply by being ourselves. We are built upon the same laws of physics, the same laws of biology, and we are also built on the laws God gives us in Scripture. Laws like the ones we heard in our first reading today, commonly known as the Ten Commandments. We so often hear these laws as something different. But they're not. These laws are not a set of moralistic rules that we have to follow or else we'll be judged sinful and be sent off to hell. No, that's not the purpose of these laws at all. These laws are akin to the laws of physics, which tell the galaxies how to spin, how to be what God made them to be. They're akin to the laws of biology, which tell the plants how to turn water and sunlight into food, how to be what God made them to be. Laws like the Ten Commandments tell us how to be human, how to be the people God made us to be. Because human beings have a special ability to choose to not be who God made us to be. We can choose to be unloving. We can choose to be unkind. We can choose to be unfaithful. We can choose to be all kinds of unthings. And we do choose that all the time. At least I do. But God's laws help us to regain our true identity, help us regain who we are. And these laws are as beautiful and exquisite as the laws of physics and biology. Listen to the author of Psalm 19 again. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. The commands of God are not weapons God uses against us. And they are certainly not weapons for us to use to control other people, though they have sadly been used that way far too often. No, the commands of God are the laws of the universe, laws that guide us to a relationship with one another and with God that is as beautiful as the sunset, as bright as the sunshine, as magical as the stars that glimmer. Commands like the first commandment, have no other God before me. Commands like the fifth commandment, do not murder or harm one another. The sixth commandment, be faithful to one another. The ninth and tenth commandments, do not strive to get what is not yours. Another way to describe these same laws is this. Let us make humans in our image according to our likeness. Psalm 19 teaches us that all these laws are really one and the same. These laws are the word God has spoken, the word that creates the cosmos, the word that brings life to creation, the word that guides you and me. God's word, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Lord of liberating love, guide our brothers and sisters at St. Peter's in Plainfield Township to be the light in their community by the acts of their love to their family, friends, and neighbors. Bless their pastor, Chris Drunkenmiller, and Pastor Schultes as they lead us on our Lenten journey. God of mercy, receive our prayer. Lord of all families, may Everett Reimer Jr., Gladys Steinmetz, Joe Schultes, Marissa Hill, William Heitzman III, Lori Coos, Cody Garris, Sadie Baker, Grace Gordella, and Rebecca Flight be filled with joy as they celebrate their birthdays this week. Let them remember that they are acceptable to you always. God of mercy. Receive our prayer. Lord of strength and courage, be with those in authority and influence. Guide their decision to include a peaceful end to wars around the world. Let us show compassion to the innocent those held in captivity, and those living on margins of society. God of mercy. Receive our prayer. Lord of creation, you open our days with beautiful sunrises and close our days with magnificent sunsets. Let the beauty of what your hand has created encourage us to be good stewards of the resources that enable us to live a life that is not wasteful. God of mercy. Receive our prayer. Lord of hope and healing, wrap your loving arms around those who are ill, weak and weary from helpless. Comfort the sorrows and grief of those who have lost a loved one and revive their soul, including Mary, Mary. Wayne, Wayne. Hina, Hina, Ethan, Ethan. Dwayne, Dwayne. Paula, Paula. Stacy, Stacy. Derek, Derek. Dale. Dale, Tim, Tim. Kathy, Katrina, Katrina. Mickey. Mickey, family and friends of Douglas, Douglas. Tom. Tom. God of mercy. Receive our prayer. Lord of community, you shower us with your abundance to share with others. Bless those who will shop at POP's treasures this week. As we open the doors, let us show your love through our conversations and actions. We're very thankful to those who bring items, help set up, and clean up the boutique. God of mercy. Receive our prayer. Accompany us on our journey, Lord of love and compassion and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share with one another a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
the PowerPoint? No. No. Okay. Um, we can do this part without the PowerPoint. So, Kale's going to pray, and your response will be, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Good. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. And I think you, many of you will know your responses to this. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life, death and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world and we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bread for the journey, a feast for hungry hearts. Come.
generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. I invite the lay Eucharist visitors who are present to stand. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick or homebound. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament, and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the, holy, or through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. peace. Share your bread. Thanks be to God. The healing service will start in about five minutes.